انت من للهدى مصدر وسيوتاتها هنا يا حيد الك ايد تنجي الندى محتار Under the Umayyads and the Abbasids they saw corruption, injustice, oppression and inequality. While all of this was happening, the caliphs lived lavish lives and equity was distributed amongst their families while others remained poor and neglected. All this could potentially lead to was a society which questioned the very notion of Islam when such oppression is widespread. It was due to this that the Imam dedicated a lot of his time and power to enter dialogue with these individuals who were calling for atheism and agnosticism. The arguments used by both parties remain relevant today and are at all times still very much used. And so at that time there was this movement where, hold on a minute, what if the case is that um, based on this, if this is what God is, then no, I, this is something I reject. And so they began to argue to try and destroy it. And obviously when they argued with many of the other uh, scholars or the scholarly class, um, with some of these arguments, they could easily destroy some of the other scholarly class. But when they would come and, and say, all right, there's this, if you really have a strong argument, come and argue with Imam Sadiq or the students of Imam Sadiq, when we look at Imam Sadiq salam, and some of the things the Imam says and many of them are taken by contemporary scholars but they don't write back and say oh, or, or write that this is where I sourced it or this is where I got it from and what I'm referring to particularly is Pascal's wager what they call Pascal's wager and uh, it's known commonly as Pascal's wager whereas Imam Sadiq salam, has said it far before this, long before this and Imam Sadiq salam, obviously the Imams were very clear with their sources when they would say Qala Abi an Jaddi, my father, my grandfather, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And so when Imam Sadiq talks about um, this particular one, which is commonly known as Pascal's wager, it's Ibn Abi al awja is looking at the Muslims doing tawaf. And him and his atheist buddies are having a bit of a discussion. Look at these people doing tawaf. Do they not look like animals that are just walking around like a herd of sheep? So they're mocking the Muslims. And then Ibn Abi al-Awja says, but it is as if that one that is in the middle of them, he's different, he's almost angelic. And he points towards Imam Sadiq salam. When they come back out, Imam Sadiq doesn't even wait for him to talk. Imam Sadiq speaks immediately and says, if it is what you say. And what Ibn Abi al-Awja was saying basically is, we live and we die and there's nothing after this. That they say that the only thing that kills us is time. But Allah says, but you have no knowledge that it is just time. Just time is relative. So people think that it's just time. We're just born into this world, we leave this world, and there's nothing after this world. So this is what Ibn Abi al awja was saying to his atheist buddies. And when Imam al-Sadiq came up, he says to him, Oh, Ibn Abi al awja if it is what you say, it is, and it is not. This means that both of us have lived, both of us eat, both of us drink, both of us... Uh, procreate and we both lose nothing but if it is as you say not meaning there is a day of judgment and there is a day of judgment then although we have both done everything the same when I die it will be eternal bliss and when you die it will be eternal punishment because the Imam was in such a critical point of history which was during the collapse of the Umayyad Empire and the rise of the Abbasid Empire he had many opportunities to get involved in power and become amongst the ruling elite. However, the pleasures of this world did not entice or tempt the Imam, as the Imam had higher and a more noble motive, bringing people closer to Allah. Abu Muslim al-Khurasani, who was one of the main players that played a pivotal role in solidifying the uh, Abbasid's grip on power. He was able to oust the Umayyads in Khurasan and after doing so, knowing that he can impose himself on the Muslims, on the Muslim nation, what he did, he sought the help of Imam Sadiq because he knew that the Ahlul Bayt have a clean reputation. Everyone would embrace the Ahlul Bayt so what he did, he sent a delegation to Imam Sadiq who was in the holy city of Medina. 
His messenger was carrying a special message, a special uh, letter to the Imam. He went and he met with the Imam and he gave the Imam the letter of Abu Muslim al Khurasani. Abu Muslim had just assumed the role of leadership in the uh, Muslim Empire. He is sending a message to Imam Sadiq. The Imam receives the letter, he opens the letter, and he finds that Abu Muslim al Khurasani is saying that I want you to join me so that you can become the emperor, you can become the king of the Muslim nation. The Imam read the letter and he didn't hesitate. He didn't need time to think about the proposal, the lucrative offer that the, the new king is, is making to the Imam. The Imam took the letter and he quickly placed it inside the lantern, burning it into, reducing it into, into ash. So the messenger was waiting for, for the Imam to give him a verbal uh, answer to respond to the letter, or at least to write something in response to Abu Muslim al-Khurasani. But the Imam didn't say anything. So the messenger said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I am waiting for an answer. I have to give uh, your response to Abu Muslim al-Khurasani straight away. I'm going back to Khurasan today. The Imam said, just tell him what you saw, that I burnt his letter. I'm not interested in this offer. When the messenger left, the people who were around the Imam were mesmerized. They said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, the Umayyads ruled for so many years and they did what they did and you were oppressed. Now you have this golden opportunity to reclaim your right. The Imam said, zaman zamani rajali. This is not my time. And these men, Abu Muslim al Khurasani, and his soldiers and his people and his advisors and the Abbasids, they are not my men. These people are in pursuit of worldly pleasures. These are not my men. I have a different agenda. My agenda is to turn people into God-fearing people, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people want to rule and they wanted the Imam to come to join them, to use the Imam as a tool and the Imam refused to give them that. Now in another incident, Mansur al-Dawaniqi, years later, Mansur al-Dawaniqi eventually killed Abu Muslim al-Khurasani. Even though it was Abu Muslim al-Khurasani that helped Mansur al-Dawaniqi become the ruler, he is not happy with the Imam. Why isn't he happy with, isn't, isn't he happy with the Imam? Because when he comes to Medina, everyone rushes to visit the Khalifa. Everyone compete over who would go in and see him first. But the Imam wouldn't go. The Imam wouldn't visit him. So Abu Muslim al so Al Mansur al Dawaniqi, the Caliph of the time, and the father of Harun al Abbasi, he sends a letter to Imam al Sadiq saying, Everyone is visiting us. Why don't you visit us? The Imam said to him that we don't have interests, that we fear that you might uh, be, you know, taking them away from us. We have nothing that we fear you for, nothing worldly that is of concern to us. And there is nothing that you have that we desire, that we want. Yes, you are in charge of, of this world. You are controlling the, uh, the affairs of, of the Muslims, but we're not interested in the things that you have, in the dunya that you are controlling. We're not interested at all. This is not what we're looking for. So the man, the Caliph said to him that, why don't you visit us to advise us? to offer us a word of advice. The Imam said, Man arada dunya la yansahuk. If I am in pursuit of worldly desires, I wouldn't be sincere in my advice to you. 
I would say, I would nod to everything that you say. I would agree to everything that you say because I want your satisfaction. I wouldn't disagree with you. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ لَا And if, if there is someone who is in pursuit of the afterlife, then such a person wouldn't give you company, wouldn't be with you. Because being with you would, uh, would be at the, at the cost of the, of the afterlife. So Mansur al-Dawaniqi, these words should have infuriated him, should have enraged him. The Imam saying that I'm not interested in you. Mansur al-Dawaniqi said that his words gave me the gauge through which I can judge the people. Anyone who comes chasing after me, I know that he is in pursuit of worldly affairs. Anyone who is not showing interest in me is someone who is in pursuit of the Akhirah. So this is something that I can use to judge. Seeing the respect and authority that Imam al-Sadiq had over the people, all of the ruling class and the elites were afraid of the Imam's position and authority. They oppressed the Imam, arrested him several times and moved him from city to city. Despite this, they failed to silence him. Following the rise and the firm establishment of the Abbasid Empire, the Abbasid Caliphs were extremely afraid of the authority that the Imam had over his followers, as they knew he had a stronger claim to the Caliphate of the Muslim Ummah over them. As a result, Al-Mansur al-Dawaniqi, the second Abbasid Caliph, poisoned the Imam on the 25th of Shawwal in the year 148 after Hijra, and the Imam was subsequently buried in Jannat al-Baqi, near his father Imam al-Baqir, and his grandfathers, Imam al-Sajjad, Imam al-Hasan, and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In 1926, the tombs of Imam al-Sadiq and his holy forefathers were raised to the ground by the Saudi ruling family, who considered the shrines idolatrous, even though previous Sunni scholars did not consider them to be so. Despite multiple attempts to rebuild the shrines, all attempts have failed, and visitors are still unable to go to his grave.